Good morning, church, and happy Valentine's Day on this frozen morning. Thanks for joining us online for worship this day. We hope to be back to drive and worship next Sunday, the first Sunday of Lent, as the weather is supposed to be significantly improved by then. This week, like I said, is the start of Lent. Ash Wednesday is this Wednesday, starting at 7 a.m. on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. There's a short devotional service for you to participate in at your leisure in your own home. You're also invited to come by the church on Wednesday from 4 to 6 p.m. for the imposition of ashes. Be sure that everyone in your car is wearing a mask and I'll come out to your car and impose ashes via long Q-tip to ensure that we are physically distanced and to help mitigate the spread of germs. Hopefully you received in the mail this week or you will receive in the next few days a Lenten devotional entitled Wilderness. It'll go along with our sermon series for the Lenten season. If you aren't on our regular mailing list but would like a Lenten devotional, please contact the church office and we will make sure to get it to you. Our Lenten Faith and Film series in conjunction with Union Avenue Christian Church in St. Louis is starting up this week as well. I hope that you'll join us at 2 p.m. on Saturday via Zoom this week for our first movie, the Disney Pixar movie, Up. It's sure to be a great time of movie watching discussion afterwards. You will need a smartphone, a computer, or an iPad to participate as we will be sharing in a screening of the movie together. It's a Pantry Pals week, so if you would like to be a part of that, Outreach Ministry, be sure to mask up and come to the Fellowship Hall on Tuesday night at 6 p.m. to be a part of packing for the school district for the next two weeks. This past week, the UACC board decided that we'll begin to allow more people in the sanctuary to watch live stream worship. Starting Sunday, February 21st, 2021, the sanctuary will be open for up to 25 persons to watch the live stream version of Drive-In Church. We ask that you sign up either through the church office or on our website underneath the worship tab. This will become a first come first serve situation. Restrooms will be available and individual packets of communion will be available for each person. We ask that you social distance and wear a mask. And always, if you aren't feeling well or have had a fever, please stay home. This is just a step towards our reopening process. We will keep you posted on further updates as more people are vaccinated and the numbers continue to trend downward in our county. Be sure to contact the health department to get on the list for your vaccination if you haven't already. In February of every year, the Christian Church Disciples of Christ collects a special offering for Week of Compassion. Week of Compassion is the Relief, Refugee, and Development Mission Fund of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ and they work with mission partners around the world to alleviate suffering throughout it. Today, we have the privilege of sharing a short video with you about their ministry. And this year, Week of Compassion has provided an extra special gift to help clergy during this difficult time of pandemic. So today, our guest preacher is the Reverend Aaron Wathen, who serves as the Communications and Development Manager for Week of Compassion. If you have offering, we encourage you to mail it into the church office or click the donate button on our website, which is uaccdc.org, and follow instructions for electronic giving. If you would like to designate part of your offering for a week of compassion, we encourage you to put on the memo line saying week of compassion and the amount. Well, I think that's all the news from around here, so let us turn our hearts and minds to God as we begin worship this day. When it comes, everything changes. Children can go to school. Women can start businesses to help support their families. Crops can grow. Neighbors can take care of each other. Markets can thrive. Families can be families. When water comes to a village, everything changes. Water is essential to life. 
and the life of a village. We are giving mixed projects like new wealth in villages possible. Give to week of compassion and let love flow. Today's reading is Mark chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. And straightway, coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven, saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness for forty days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beast, and the angels ministered unto him. Now, after that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Who's up for a trip? If you're like me, it's been a while since you've been, well, anywhere. Life these days feels a lot like that Hotels.com commercial where Captain Obvious says, Do you remember places? I remember places. So I thought maybe we could take a trip together today. First, imagine that your church's mission life is a stream. Maybe its source is the sanctuary where you gather for worship. Or maybe these days it's in the homes and hearts of your members, wherever they may be. Wherever it is, find that source and then follow the stream from its place of beginning. Where does it go? What path does it take as your congregation embodies the gospel and carries it out into the world. What people, what words, what resources carry the witness of your faith community from the source and out to your neighbors? Think about how that stream flows, how it moves and shapes the landscape as it goes, because water changes everything it touches, you know? Whose lives are touched by that mission stream as it flows? What stories of good news do people tell in its wake? Who has been fed or healed or restored to new life because they came into contact with that living stream? As the stream moves, maybe it picks up speed. The path it carves grows wider And as it passes through the outskirts of town, maybe you start to lose sight of it, but you can trust its ripples continue. Maybe it even becomes a river. That river carries the gifts of your congregation out to a wider mission field where love flows freely and the landscape is altered. Follow that river out past the county line out beyond the highway, beyond all the paved roads, actually. Follow it past everything you can account for in the mission budget and out to a place where God is doing a new thing. Out to a place where the terrain is rough, the landscaping is wild, and anything is possible. When we stop at the edge of that river, in that wilderness place, we might see two figures out in the waves. One of them lowers the other down into the water. And when they emerge from its surface, everything changes. The baptism of Jesus marks the beginning of many extraordinary things. 
It is a moment of transformation, not just for Jesus himself, but for all those who witness it. And for all those who will be touched by that moving stream of his life in the months, years, and generations to come. In Mark's gospel, this episode is placed as a prologue to the rest of the story, a precursor to every healing and teaching, every feeding miracle, and the coming resurrection. With the dramatic tearing open of the heavens, this is a moment of cosmic significance, revealing that the space between heaven and earth is in fact a very thin one. The divides between God and humanity, between the sacred and the everyday, reduce to a nearly transparent veil. What flows from this moment is a story of all that God will accomplish through Jesus, not just in this time, but through all time. So what follows our own baptism is a small retelling, a rerun of this same story. A moment when the space between heaven and earth is revealed to be so much smaller than we think it is. And a moment of communal rejoicing at what God can accomplish through us. What flows from that moment is a whole life of faith, a stream of service and generosity that can transform the landscape around us. This water changes everything it touches, you know. Our week of compassion offering this year is an invitation to let love flow. That little trip we took along that moving stream from your congregation's mission and our wider church's mission, it's not entirely metaphorical. Each of our disciples' churches have their own local impact, the many ways and places that we all serve and care for our neighbors and our local communities. And when we give to Week of Compassion, we step into this rushing river that carries our presence so much farther and so much wider than what we can see a love that flows to those in need around the world, around the year. We've felt the pressing needs of neighbors in ways that were especially acute in the past year. As it turns out, those little lines on a map don't stop the spread of disease. And a pandemic does not recognize all of our human-made boundaries to keep people in certain contained spaces. We have learned that whether we like it or not, our lives are deeply intertwined. Our well-being is bound inextricably to that of neighbors close to home and those literally halfway around the world. As the Refugee Relief and Development Mission Fund of the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, Week of Compassion responded to a global pandemic as we would to any disaster by working with congregations, church leaders, and our network of global partners to learn what is most needed, where our resources would be put to the best use, and then moving quickly to meet urgent needs. In many ways, though, the crisis of a pandemic was like nothing anyone had ever seen before. For one thing, it affected life in every part of the world and not just a particular community or region. It also impacted every area of our work, from refugee support to disaster response to ongoing development projects. Everything had to be reassessed, reevaluated, and modified for COVID-19 considerations. And of course, the pandemic unfolded and continues to evolve in the midst of other local and global crises. A term that we've become all too familiar with 
in the past year or so is compound disasters. With the intersection of a pandemic and the growing frequency and severity of natural disasters, far too many communities and congregations have grown familiar with that term as well. In Nashville, our friends at New Covenant Christian Church were already working against the pre-existing condition of systemic racism when a tornado devastated their neighborhood. So they quickly mobilized to respond to the storm and the needs of their neighbors, but then the pandemic mean that they had to change their whole approach. A horrific explosion in Beirut killed hundreds and injured thousands at a time when the healthcare system was already struggling under the weight of COVID-19. In Oregon, disciples' congregations were working hard to serve those in need from the pandemic when historic wildfires complicated things even further all across the state, across the whole region. And our friends and partners in Central America suffered an especially tragic blow with the back-to-back -back impact of two major hurricanes just one week apart. Many of those most affected were in communities where Week of Compassion has invested in relationships and development programs for many years. The loss of life, crops, homes, and livelihoods in this record-breaking hurricane season is unfathomable. So what do we do, church, when there is fire and flood disease and disaster, racism and ruin, all at the same time, and in so many places, the need feels overwhelming, the suffering too far-reaching and too widespread for our small gifts to touch it. But then we remember the good news, that in the moment of our baptism, we step into a moving stream that started at a source long before we got here and will continue long past our time. Our whole lives are caught up in a river of mercy that lets love flow, even to places that seem unreachable. And this body of Christ is a living, moving body that moves through the world, transforming everything it touches. That means that your love flows to places like Nashville to support disciples who keep feeding their neighbors in need for multiple crises, while also working for racial and economic justice to address housing needs in their community. Your love flows to Beirut serving people in need of housing as a result of the explosion and those without access to food and water, as well as those who were injured or lost loved ones and those seeking economic opportunity. Your love flows to Oregon, supporting disciples' congregations as they feed their unhoused neighbors while also coordinating together to serve those whose lives were upended by the fires. Your love flows to Honduras and Nicaragua, supporting rapid response in the wake of multiple hurricanes. Your love provides food kits and safe water right now for those who have lost everything. And your love also stays for the long haul looking ahead, supporting our partners as they seek long-term solutions to complex problems. And furthermore, your past generosity has changed the landscape in so many places. Your past generosity and ongoing presence means that many communities around the world, like those in Central America, were better prepared to stay safe during COVID-19. While the challenges remain significant 
access to improved sanitation and clean, safe water for hand washing helped some of the most vulnerable populations weather this pandemic. Through ongoing development projects that our churches have supported for years, more people are empowered to prevent the spread of disease among their family and friends. And as we look to the future, we know that our continued investment in development and livelihood support will be crucial in recovering from this difficult season. With this week of compassion offering, we let love flow from a source of deep hope and longing to a place of transforming love. In recent days, many of us have been thinking about what we might give up for Lent this year. But in a time when we have already given up so much of what is normal, what is comforting, even what is sacred, I wonder if maybe this year we should think less about what we are giving up and more about what we are giving to. And when you give to Week of Compassion, you aren't just contributing to an offering. You are giving your greatest gifts. You are sharing hope and love. You are giving life to future dreams and bringing present hope into reality. You are feeding the hungry today and empowering communities to feed their children for generations to come. You are helping women and children access education and opportunity. You are sharing comfort and empowering refugees. You are rebuilding homes, churches, and lives impacted by disaster. You are stepping into a moving stream. So let love flow from the waters of our baptism to the places of deepest aching need. Let it flow from our churches and our homes and out into our neighborhoods and far beyond it. Let it flow in ways that keep this body moving and alive and bind us together even when we are apart. Every body of water has one thing in common, a source. And for disciples, that source is the love of God made known in Christ and community. When you release that power to let love flow, miraculous things happen in the wake of that stream. It's water changes everything it touches, you know. Amen. Oh, me.
In communion with Christ, we are joined with the trials and suffering of all. This morning we pray that through Christ, we too would be with those who endure the wind, the rain, and flooding. As we come to this table, we pray to the Lord, protect those in the path of danger, open the pathways of evacuations, help loved ones find one another in chaos, provide assistance to those who need help. May Christ's presence be known in, to all who are fearful and discouraged, just as he makes his presence known in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup at this table and around the world, in every nation, among every people. These are the gifts of God for God's people. Let us come with joy and gratitude and hope, and let us remember that it is from this table that we let love flow. One night when Jesus gathered with his disciples in an upper room, he took a loaf of bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to those gathered and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. In the same manner, when the meal had come to the end, he took the cup and after giving thanks to God, he said, this cup is the covenant renewed in me, God's love poured out for all. Let us pray. O Holy One, be known to us in the breaking of bread and in the sharing of cup. Pour out your spirit upon the elements that we have gathered and make them again once into a holy meal. We ask this in your Son's name who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to partake of the elements that you have gathered in your home, knowing that God will show up and make them into a holy meal. Let us share in the feast of God's love. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with the tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, starvation, and war so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and turn their pain to joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you really can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done.